Thyroid hormone is often described as controlling metabolic rate. If you don't have any thyroid hormone, you will tend to be rather sluggish, uh, you will tend to sleep a lot, you will tend to be uh, fond of hot weather rather than cold weather, you will have dry skin, um, you tend to be a bit bunged up, a bit constipated, and if you like, these are all symptoms that are at the um, more extreme end of the spectrum in people who don't have thyroid hormone. It's the group of individuals who have hypothyroidism. I guess in the broadest sense, there are two main groups. There are those individuals who are typically picked up in very early life in the UK by the neonatal screening programme, the baby screening programme, because they have um, a thyroid gland that ha either hasn't developed properly or has developed but has a production line problem. So this is a condition called congenital hypothyroidism. For children with hypothyroidism, children and young people with hypothyroidism, they will either be unable to make thyroid hormone because they were born with a thyroid problem, so-called congenital hypothyroidism. And that usually, but not always, needs treatment for life. Or, as is the case with a lot of young people, a lot of teenagers, you develop the thyroid problem as the years go by. And classically, the, the reason for the thyroid gland failing to uh, function normally is because of so-called autoimmunity. And under normal circumstances, the immune system does a very, very good job at battling viruses and bacteria, beating them up, sorting them out. But in thyroid autoimmunity, the body mistakenly targets the thyroid gland, your own thyroid gland, and starts beating it up instead. And you can imagine if a gland's being beaten up, it doesn't tend to function normally. And so a lot of people who present in the teenage years with an underactive thyroid gland have thyroid autoimmunity. They have antibodies that have beaten up the thyroid gland and the gland is not working in the normal way as a, as a result. But certainly in the context of teenagers, I guess you have individuals who have, who've become underactive um, either because they've always been underactive ever since they were born and they've been on medication since they were um, diagnosed in early life and you have some people who present in the teenage years. And I guess the, the way you present in the teenage years varies quite a bit because it may be at one end of the spectrum you develop the classical picture of an underactive, someone with an underactive thyroid gland. You become, um, maybe you might notice changes in your skin, you may notice dry hair, you may notice weight gain, you may not, uh, um, you may not be quite as active or feel quite as, as, um, as active as was the case uh, in, in, in previous, previous months or years. And you, um, you're aware that something's not quite right and you visit the doctor and lo and behold, they think, aha, maybe you've got a thyroid problem and take a blood sample. And the classical way of diagnosing hypothyroidism is to take a blood sample, looking at the level of thyroid hormone, but also looking at the, the gland that tells the thyroid gland to work, the pituitary gland. Um, as I mentioned, it's a, a bit like the conductor of the orchestra and clearly if you've got a thyroid gland that's not working, then what happens is the pituitary gland starts whipping it extra hard to try and get it to produce thyroid hormone. And it's that, if you like, that increase in uh, pituitary gland function that is picked up by the doctor when they take a blood sample. So classically, um, somebody with an underactive thyroid gland will present with a range of physical symptoms. They don't feel right, constipated, weight gain, dry skin. I know something's not quite right. They go to the doctor, have a blood test, and you realise they've developed an underactive thyroid gland. Sometimes it can present in different ways, of course, because it may be that somebody notices that you've developed a lump in the neck. And we know that people who have autoimmune thyroid disease, who've got a gland that's been beaten up by the body's immune system, the gland sometimes gets big. And you may feel, in some instances, fine. But you have a blood test because somebody's noticed that you've got a thyroid gland swelling. And the uh, abnormal thyroid gland function is, is picked up on the basis not of how you feel, but how you look. 
The beauty of having an underactive side gland is that the treatment is relatively straightforward in, in that it just involves um, taking a tablet each day and for the vast majority of people that works very very well. You take your tablet every day, you have the occasional blood test. In younger people that, ten that blood test tends to be more often. In older people maybe it might be every six months or so and lo and behold uh, if you're on an appropriate dose of side hormone replacement most people respond really really well and feel feel fine on this thyroid hormone replacement. I guess one of the things that we recognize is that although to somebody might like me you think that taking a tablet is incredibly simple um, if you're ever if you ever have to do it yourself, you realise it's perhaps not quite as straightforward as you imagined. And for some young people whose parents are putting their tablets in front of them every morning, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. But you inevitably enter a phase when you have to take responsibility for um, your own treatment. And if anybody says to me they've never missed a dose of thyroxine, I would say, well, actually, that makes you pretty unusual. And I guess one of the key times when you do forget, I suppose, is when your parents are passing the thyroxine ball, if you like. They're saying, right, you know, it's about time you perhaps took this on board yourself. And I think most people would forget from time to time under those circumstances. And I guess one of the things that happens if you do miss a dose is you don't automatically feel poorly the next day or in, indeed the next few days. And I think that sometimes can, people can be lulled into thinking that maybe they don't need the thyroid hormone because it, um, uh, it's not taking a dose, doesn't make you feel awful. But we know that because thyroxine hangs around in the body a long time, you've got to miss a few doses before the thyroid hormone levels in the bloodstream fall down to a point where you get symptoms. And in some respects, it's a recipe for, if you like, for uh, people struggling to take medication. Because I think if you didn't take a tablet and within half an hour you felt really awful, I think it would be a lot easier for people to remember to take the medication. And I think thyroxine is an absolute classic in that, um, in that it's, it's very easy to miss the odd tablet and it's uh, it potentially, when you're missing lots and lots of tablets, it can be slightly misleading for the doctor who's taking the blood test. Because what happens is you toddle along to the doctor and you, they say, right, you know, let's take a blood sample from you. And the blood sample looks as if you're on insufficient medication. And they then write to you and say, you need more medication. When in fact, the problem wasn't that you were on an insufficient dose. It's just that, well, in, you're actually on the right dose. It's just that you're not taking the tablets. And... I mean, I've been in the firing line myself. I mean, I've had to take tablets. Is it easy taking tablets every day? Well, no. When I've meant to, when I've had to take tablets every day, have I remembered all the time? No. So I think you accept that um, that you you're going to miss the odd one. But if you're missing three or four a week, that's when um, the blood tests can be very, very misleading, and you can get into this vicious cycle where the doctor's saying, "Increase your medicine. Increase your medicine." in reality the problem is, is, is just that you're struggling to take it and we see that pretty commonly just, just because, as I said, remembering to take medicine is, is easy to talk about in theory but maybe not so easy to do in practice. I think I would summarise the treatment of hypothyroidism by saying that thankfully in the vast majority of people you take your medication uh, on a daily basis and you have your um, monitoring at the local practice or the local hospital and on that regimen you feel fine. You, um, and detailed studies have looked at how people feel and how they perform on thyroid hormone replacement in the long term and there's little difference between them and individuals who don't have thyroid problems. Um, so it's really a very positive message and positive story for the vast majority of people.